Hello, I'm Tom Bushell, a sports broadcaster and event host with a passion for travel. And I'm inviting you to join me as I tell the story of our world through sport and adventure. Every week I'm showcasing the sports that make a destination and the adventures that bring them to life with some incredible stories along the way of how sport and adventure brings us all together. This week I'm in the Pentland Hills just south of Edinburgh to guide you on how to reach the highest summit in the Pentlands on a hike that takes in five peaks and all just a short bus journey from Edinburgh's city centre. Welcome to the Planet Playground YouTube channel. I'd love you to join the community, like the video, comment with any questions and subscribe as I bring together travel, sport and adventure because our planet is our playground. My journey starts in the city centre of Edinburgh, outside one of the city's most iconic structures, the Scott Monument on Princes Street. And it's from here that you'll need to take the Stagecoach 101 or 101A service, which will take you out the mayhem of the city and into the mountains. Bus service runs hourly on weekdays, slightly less on weekends, and will take around 40 minutes passing through the Brunsfield area of Edinburgh before the mountains come into view. You'll get off the bus at Flotterstone, cross the road and find the Flotterstone Inn. Now the trick here is not to be tempted into the Flotterstone Inn. <laughs> we'll save the treats until after the hike. Just down the road you'll find the Pentland Hills Cafe, which is the perfect location for a coffee, bathroom break and somewhere to have a look at the route you're about to undertake. This is my route today. It's just under eight miles long and we will be walking to the highest peak that you can reach in the Pentlands at Skald Law. Here we go then, my quest to reach the highest peak in the Pentlands on a glorious day in Scotland. The hike begins with a short walk on tarmac, which is a pleasant start, but soon you'll turn left and you'll follow the sign for Skull Law. You'll go through a fence which sets you on your way. Not long after you've gone through that first gate, you'll go through another gate, turn left and cross the little bridge. Not going to catch me running up the hill. <laughs> this hike likes to mess with your mind, the pub at the start line. And then after that short walk to begin with, the biggest ascent of the hike. You can see behind me, the highest peak in view at the moment, that's Turnhouse Hill. And that's where this first ascent is taking us. Turnhouse Hill is at a height of 900 feet, but there are a few obstacles in the way first. Another gate. I think that's three or so now. <laughs> Another gate. Number four. <laughs> and the climb continues. Even though it's close to freezing today, the coat has had to come off because this first ascent warms you up fairly quickly. And whilst I can't guarantee you'll have a clear day, either way you'll be pleased to find some shade to stop for a moment and look back at what you've already achieved. About halfway up the climb to Turnhouse Hill, you'll get to this little area where there's a few trees and it's a good point to stop and take a breath, but also taking the views as well. Back on the trail, onwards and upwards. As you continue, you will get your first glimpse of Glencourse Reservoir. It was built in 1820 and supplies drinking water to Edinburgh. Your next stop is the peak of Turnhouse Hill, your first peak of the day. With 
more views of Glencore's reservoir, you'll also get uninterrupted views of what is still to come on the trail, before heading back downhill onto a plateau which gives the legs a little respite before the next climb to Carnethy Hill. Right, so once we've come all the way back downhill, it's time for the fifth gate of the hike. And then, hard work starts again. Getting higher and higher as more and more snow sits on the ground. What's nice about this stretch of the hike is there's a clear and definite path, which is pretty straightforward to walk on actually, but of course be careful when it's slippery. In fact, the whole hike, even though it may not be signposted at every corner, is pretty easy to follow. And with just another little push, you'll reach the Carnethy Hills Summit, and it's here the Pentlands come alive. Once you've conquered Conifi Hill, it's back down the hill before going up again to the highest peak of the Pentlands, Skald Law. We'll get there eventually. So back down the hill, and as I stopped for a snack in a break from the wind, I realised disaster had struck. I've only got left my GoPro at the top of Conifi Hill. Unbelievable! What a nightmare! All the way back up Carnethy Hill. Oh no 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 no! Right, where were we? Once you have come down Carnethy Hill, you'll then have a fairly straightforward walk along to the beginning of the next climb, this time to Skald Law, and the highest peak in the Pentland Hills. Now it's time for gate number six. And of course, what happens after we go through the gate? Yeah, time to start climbing again. The path on this stretch of the hike is a little looser, so be careful on your feet, especially if it is icy and there is snow around. Soon though it will be mission completed as you reach the summit at an altitude of 1,900 feet. And after about two and a half hours of hiking, you are now at the highest point in the Pentland Hills, and what a day to do it. For any sport and adventure lover, the Pentland Hills are just a short bus ride away from Edinburgh, so easily achievable as a day hike whilst visiting Scotland's capital. And when you see just how stunning they are, it's well worth the £1.60 for the journey. Oh, I thought I had a nightmare leaving my GoPro on top of Carnethy Hill. Even more of a nightmare now. The wind has taken the drone, just caught it. 
and it's made an emergency landing because the battery's gone. Let me show you my search area. My first plan is to get back down. I saw this track, I tried to keep it on this track. So I'm getting back down this track and then I'm gonna try and see if it will take off so I can at least see it or hear it. Oh, my chances are slim here. What have I done? What have I done? Okay, I've still got a signal on it on my phone. That, you see that? That's where it is. It won't take off. And it's still saying critically low battery. So it's alive, but how am I gonna find it in all this heather? It's landed somewhere in this heather. There's a nothing on the app that tells you where it is. Got it! I've got it! I found it! <laughs> Here it is! Oh! 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 the relief! <laughs> oh! That is brilliant! What technology! There is a Find My Drone feature on the app and that has worked a treat. Just look at the search area. <laughs> I am absolutely delighted. Look how far away it got. I was on top of the mountain. It's all the way down here. I have just realized though, I need to climb back up that mountain. So having climbed back up Skold Law, summited for the second time, it was now time to complete the hike with the final two peaks. The East and West Kip, they're nowhere near as difficult as the first three. So really the worst is behind you now. Once you reach the top of the East Kip, take a look behind you for a brilliant view of what you have done through the day. Right, that's the East Kip done. One more to go, and it's all downhill. And with the West Kip in sight, it was a mad dash to get the fifth and final peak completed. Well, kind of. I know it's the last one. I need to sit down though and rest. I'm fatigued. <laughs> These two kips actually, they're, they're quite steep, but they're short climbs. But after you've done three of those bigger ones, well, five for me today. <laughs> By the time you get to the last one, you need a little bit of a sit down. My rest wasn't for long though, with the sun getting lower in the sky and still one more peak to conquer, I didn't have time to hang around. Going back into the sun, which must mean we're always, can't even talk, <laughs> almost at the top of this one. Oh, there it is. Oh, what a view. Oh, the West Kip. Stunning, stunning. So once you're off the West Kip, it's pretty much downhill all the way back to our final destination of Nine Mile Burn. <laughs> Look at what we've just come off the West Kip. Be careful going down there. Uh, you'll get to this path and there's a side post here and a fence to cross over and then you're on the path back to Nine Mile Burn. And I've heard there's a good pub there. That is the best of Scotland today. Blue skies, incredible peaks, mountains, streams, brisk air. And do you know what the best thing about all of that is? Reaching the highest peak of the Pentlands. All of that was just a £1.60 bus ride away from the very city centre of Edinburgh. 
gate number what? I don't know, eight, nine maybe? Completely lost count. <laughs> One last fence had to cross and then we are moments away from the finish line of an amazing hike. All five peaks of it, or seven if you're me. <laughs> the last 45 minutes or so of this hike, you're pretty much walking through fields. You've got to concentrate to make sure you stay on the path. But that is the last gate. I don't know, gate number 12, something like that. As you finish the hike, you'll need to just walk down this little road to the main road where there's a bus stop, but not something else that I'd been looking forward to. So it turns out there isn't a pub in Nine Mile Burn. <laughs> and I've just missed the hourly bus. Uh, so this lovely bus stop is my home for the next hour. <laughs> what else could go wrong on this hike? So if you want a pub at the end of the hike, this is where you need to start at Nine Mile Burn and hike your way to the Flotterstone Inn. Oh, look nice that pub. Anyway. Luckily, I didn't have to wait too long. Leave it, there's a bus. <laughs> <laughs> Luck is on my side. Once again, it's the 101 bus service back to the centre of Edinburgh and it will take about an hour. Don't forget to comment below with any questions and I hope you enjoy this hike when you get round to doing it. Thank you for watching. Please do like the video and of course subscribe as I tell the story of our world through sport and adventure because our planet is our playground.